Okay, so today's December the 3rd, 2011, and yesterday I was at a friend's house and I pulled out these uh, ivory, or this is the Wenatchee bone rod, the cast of it, and this is the cast also of the That's ivory that was found in Sheridan Cave in Ohio. And anyway, I uh, had my cast out last night and was trying to figure out how to put this thing together, like you see in pictures and stuff on the internet and books and whatever. And anyway, I noticed that right on the Very tip of this when I roll it if you look on the very end of it you can see what looks like what used to be a ridge right along here and then from here back you can see what's looked like a really deep groove that's tapered all the way up uh, and then right in this area, it's kind of flat. Not really flat, but it's flatter than the other side, which is actually pretty round. Pretty round all the way around, except for right there where it's kind of flat. In line with this bevel. Comes to a nice tapered tip. It's ivory. Probably really strong. They found this in... Uh, uh, I guess along with a, a peccary, a pig, then there was a hole in the shoulder blade of the pig and it just happens to match the diameter of this ivory tip, but it looks like there's some stuff missing. And of course a lot of people think there's some stuff missing with this too. Uh, I think they're, they found several other rods, like a dozen or so, and this one is was in really good shape. and. It has some little notches along in this area on the flat face of this. This side's flat, this side's rounded. And uh, there were other rods too that, at least one for sure that I can tell that had some of those grooves along the middle of it. I don't know what those are for. I still haven't figured that out yet. But some other things on this I want to make note about is this hole back here and you can look closely with a magnifying glass and see tool marks on it so it was put there on purpose and also this gouge this groove along this the inside and what might possibly there might be a little hole right in this region but not real sure it could be just some deterioration or maybe everything around it was deteriorated so you can't really tell right now um, also it's thickest about right in here and it tapers oh so very slightly all the way down this direction and the same in this view it's thickest right in here and slightly tapers down so I got the idea that this might fit together with this uh, ring groove on this piece, this ring and groove here, and fits inside of the groove on this. Obviously this doesn't go together. This is from Washington and this is from Ohio, but that's all I had to work with. <clears throat> anyway, so it fits in there something like this. and then this becomes once we put it together Dale's got I've been working with Dale on this today we've made a go ahead and show him Dale yeah this is uh, the composite spear tip um, we got our replica of the bone rod it's beveled both ends just like the cast here um, we also Put the groove in on the tip here, and one thing to notice is 
even on the cast. Like this side here is very flat compared to this, which is rounded, which makes you think two flat edges go together, fits really good and tight. So then when we make two replicas of the bone rod and they fit together very nicely, leaving the slot for the harder ivory tip and with the groove the deeper spot that can be noticed on some bone tips I think another one from Sheridan Cave and then examples from Florida there are some with this little nub sticking out and the Anzig site yeah, on the opposite side of the bevel so one of the ideas is that these notches in the bone rod this little nub would fit in and kind of lock it in place so it doesn't move around a lot once it's hafted and the first um, prototype of this tip was actually rounded and when we're looking at this other cast here it's just flat on this side so we went ahead and flattened this side again and it fits better in the composite tip here because one side with the groove fits the rounded end and then on our next prototype instead of having a groove on both this will just be flat to butt up against the flat of the ivory and when you put it together as you can see Back up a little bit. it fits real nice the taper I mean it's obviously geared toward penetration you know these are tapered so that hitting hide and hair isn't going to stop penetration um, also in Washington they found a mastodon with a bone or ivory tip just like this lodged in a rib and it was actually coming down from above the mastodon and so it went through over a foot of yeah, hide and <clears throat> hide and muscle before it stuck got to, before it reached it. and this this setup here like you've got a lot of weight here you've got the ivory and the bone attached to a longer wooden shaft so in the situation of that mastodon that was found I mean that's a lot of energy coming down and that allowed it to penetrate all the way through the high muscle and into a bone you can imagine if it hadn't hit that rib bone it would have gone right through the lungs yeah vital organs probably a lethal blow <clears throat> and <clears throat> we're not really sure how this this end uh, it's mounted in something but we think that it's that this whole all three of these is a four shaft for something else and uh, by looking at the the cast of the real one it's got this gouged out notch right there that I was talking about before sorry about the wind I bet that doesn't sound good um, and you can see that it's it has some depth to it but so if you imagine we didn't put any gouges in this one yet so we're not really sure what's going on but if you imagine that this maybe slid down into some other type of four shaft I I'm not sure if wood would be strong enough but eventually wood would probably be the lance but if this slid into something and there was a wedge in the bottom of it opposite of this shape and some little mm, tits sticking off of the the flat planes then whenever this slid down in there it might just click right into place or maybe with some binding would help hold it in place or something at least that's an initial idea. We don't really know much about that yet, but uh, this is just preliminary, and this is 
we made this out of persimmon, by the way, all three of these. And <clears throat> it's just something that I had laying around. I didn't want to waste any bone or anything on it yet. I'm glad I didn't use bone because we have to make some changes. But anyway, it's just preliminary, but we are just dang near certain that this was probably a highly efficient Lancelot tip. And I also would like to mention that this agrees with my theory about Clovis is not being a projectile point. That it was, they used them for tool purposes. I mean, if you've got this, I mean, and we're going to do some experimenting and demonstrating too. We're going to put Clovis in one of these and just show just how wrong that it is and how bad it of a system that it is and how it probably won't work and fall apart on the first try. And we're also going to do some penetration tests with this and something. Dale's ex-girlfriend or something. <laughs>